If you would ask me when Mattel first started making He-Man toys again that we would have not just one, but two Castle Grayskull play sets, I would have said you were crazy. But here we are in 2022, and I have the second Grayskull play set that Mattel has made. This one supporting the Netflix CGI show, and it is massive, and it is awesome. Hello everybody and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Glatfelter here. Much like all of the other designs on the Netflix show, this gray skull brings a ton of new ideas to the classic castle while still taking inspiration from the original. My kids and I have loved the show as well as the action figures. Both the show and the toys are aimed more for the kids than adults, but both the toys and show have endeared themselves to audiences young and old alike. Given the Origins Grayskull release last year, I did not expect Mattel to come right back the following year with a Grayskull to support the CGI line. And I commend Mattel for producing fantastic real deal play sets when other toy companies completely avoid it. The packaging for this set was way bigger than I expected. Honestly, everything about this set is larger than I expected. The box measures 26 by 15 by 8 and features awesome artwork on the front showcasing a battle royale between the Masters of the Universe and Skeletor's evil warriors. Taking cues from previous Grayskulls, the box complements the original artwork on the front with pictures of the actual Grayskull in action on the top of the box as well as the back. The box opens up briefcase style, which threw me off at first, to show a ton of parts. I'd argue this Grayskull requires the most amount of work to assemble than any other before it, and felt daunting at first, but luckily it was a fairly straightforward assembly. There's a small sticker sheet as well, which always makes me stressed out. Luckily, I did okay with applying them, and in about 10 minutes or so, I had the Grayskull put together. It's important to note this set needs three AA batteries to activate its electronic features. Luckily, the playset still functions fine without them if you don't have any handy. But I gotta say, the electronic features are a ton of fun. And I could say the same about this overall set. Starting with its appearance, your mileage may vary depending on how you feel about the CGI show's designs. But I like the fresh take they've used with Grayskull in the series, and I think they've done a decent job recreating that in toy form. The Grayskull in this show is massive, not just in scale from the outside, but on the inside as well. The inside fills a different dimension which seems to have no end. Oh, and the castle also floats in space. Translating that into a reasonably scaled playset is a challenge, and that's where most of my gripes with this set lie. The existing CGI He-Man figures, beasts, and vehicles can and do fit throughout the set, but it's a tight squeeze. That's not to say this is a small playset. It's massive when put together. Taking up nearly two square feet without the jaw bridge and the extending sides engaged. That makes it 30 inches wide and 24 inches deep. And the height comes in at about 20 inches. I applaud them for taking on the challenge of scaling down this massive fortress, but it is not as spacious or as full featured as previous gray skulls. The play features it does have are a ton of fun though, starting with the electronic lights and sounds. There's two big features that utilize the power sword, the first being the lightning effects that are spring-loaded. You first push down the effect by locking it into place, then you push the sword in the middle button, or just press the button. The effects are then released, knocking back any villain trying to enter through the door and giving any Masters of the Universe their own power-up like they do on the show. The other sword feature is a jaw bridge, taking cues from the original playset, and everyone after, the power sword unlocks and lowers the jaw bridge. This one is a bit fancier though. It has a staggered spring-loaded effect that is the most impressive feature of this set. Again, if you place the sword in or just press the button near the gate, the eyes light up with awesome sound effects that go with the lowering of the bridge. The other two electronic effects flank the top button, giving you computer and fighting sound effects to add to your battles. Something new for this Grayskull are the two spacecraft that can flank the front or back of the castle by attaching to these long white bone pieces that act as the stands for the castle. They have simple projectile launchers, but they fit the figures, they have adjustable handlebars, and then they also easily attach and detach from the bone columns. 
I like that these columns help create the effect of the floating fortress that we see on the show. The side walls open up and extend out to give you more play area with a control center on one side and a weapons rack slash dungeon on the other. This also kind of recreates the open feeling of the midsection of the castle as seen on the show. But the star fields and colorful clouds are so vibrant on the show. I wish they would have added some kind of decals to represent this. Maybe they could have added decals to the inside parts of the foldout sections. This could have made it seem like they were floating. This is something that Playmates did really well on sets like the Technodrome. It was simple but effective. There are stickers for the library and tapestries though, but they don't come close to the massive floating libraries that feature in the show. But I'm still glad that they're here. There are foot pig holes throughout the set, but are missing in places where I think they would have been useful, like the extending platforms, and they show up in places that you don't need them, like the trapdoor. Speaking of that trapdoor, it's not as fun as the classic throne room of Grayskull's past. But it still works, albeit it happens outside of the castle, with the bone back of the castle dropping into a force field dungeon that attaches to the back of the playset. This feature belies its greatest fault. After I put this playset together, I handed it over to my two sons, age four and eight. And while they had fun and got a kick out of all the features, all of the action happened around the castle, not in it. And that is the opposite of previous Grayskulls. The magic of those sets is all of the play and world building that would go on because you had so much to do inside of the castle. There were actual secrets and powers that made you want to defend the castle. My kids can and have spent hours playing with the Origins Grayskull that features everything that made the original special. And while they played with and enjoyed this one, their playtime with this new Grayskull was a lot shorter than the previous one, clocking in at probably 30 minutes before they moved on to something else. Because they had to scale this set down so much smaller than any other Grayskull before it, the figures end up scaling really big when inside, on, or around the castle. So most of the features have to take place outside of this set. When measuring the inside, you've got about nine inches by six inches with around six inches of height clearance. The figures themselves are about five and a half inches, so really, you don't have much space to work with. Another spot where the size issue becomes glaring is with the new Talon Fighter. The original famously had an attachment that would connect to the highest tower of Grayskull, and that is just not possible with the highest tower of this set. It absolutely dwarfs any of the towers featured on this set, but you can get it on a pretty decent perch on the very top of the castle. I don't have an answer to how they could have made it work better. I think they did a really good job given the type of castle they had to recreate. They opted to make the playset that captured the look of the CGI one in full, but getting that look into a manageable scale did negatively impact the playability. Still, this huge playset with tons of features and so much depth and dimension is an impressive playset and a reasonably priced one as well. In terms of footprint, this is the biggest Grayskull ever released in retail. Classics is still the biggest. And it's still under 100 bucks, currently $99 on Amazon. If you're a collector of the CGI line, this will be the defining piece of your CGI collection. If your kid really wants a Castle Grayskull that looks just like the one on a CGI show, they'll love it. But if they want a Grayskull that they will get the most joy out of playing with, I'd still give them the Origins one. I want to thank the people that make this show possible. My patrons, you can find a full list of them right here. If you'd like to help this channel grow, become a patron today at patreon.com slash geekdadlife. If you like this video and want to keep watching, check out this video right here. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.